God, God bless everyone on tonight. We do honor the spirit of, of Christ on tonight. And God bless you, uh, Pastor Simpkins. Can you all hear me? Yes, okay. And God bless uh, you, First Lady Simpkins. We do say welcome back. Amen. I see your head shining. Praise the Lord. That looked like some anointing that, that is up on you. Praise God. We thank God for the anointed uh, leaders that we have. And uh, we do honor you on tonight. That, that, and, uh, that's a shea butter anointing. <laughs> shea butter anointing. <laughs> yeah. All right. We thank God for, for you guys being back. And we do. Uh, I definitely honor uh, my wife on tonight. And I uh, just want to let everybody know she just a little bit. She's under the weather. So uh, y'all pray for Missionary Ivory. Y'all pray for, I, I, I feel empty right about now. Amen. But I, I, uh, I got the Holy Ghost, what you all say. I feel the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is right, right here with me. And uh, we want to uh, get right into it. We won't be long. Amen. But we just want to share what God has given us, the assignment that we have <clears throat> on tonight. Amen. I thank God for our, our Bishop Macklin. Amen. Also. Uh, I was watching the uh, uh, convocation, and uh, I want to let you know, I heard that message, and uh, that word N-O-W, now, and then he said, you feel it in, now, you know, and I, I filled it in, too, now, it's time to get busy for the Lord, amen. Father, we thank you, we praise you on tonight, and we just ask that you uh, speak to our hearts, speak to our mind, God, this is our Bible. Uh, study uh, class, God, and we ask that you bless everyone that chimed on on tonight, that God had a conscious decision to get into Bible study, God. We just thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. God, your word, it washes us. Your word, it cleanses us. God, your word got all power in his hands. So God, we just thank you for what you are going to speak to our hearts. I bind every distraction, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that everyone, oh God, be attentive and bring in their wondering minds. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. We just thank God. And I'm still getting used to all this technology stuff. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's a blessing, to be honest with you. And sometimes it can be nerve-wracking. Cause you could think you got it all together. And next thing you push one button and it's gone. And next thing, you know, you like, whoa, but I want to let you know, oh, without all that, I got old Betsy right here. And I tell you what, this is the word of the Lord and you can't go wrong with that. But as our pastor was saying, we've been talking about uh, the gift of the Holy spirit. And we have been hammering that and dealing with that. Uh, but my assignment on tonight, is to talk about the gift of giving. Amen, the gift of giving. And I hope uh, y'all don't uh, tune me out now and I hope I don't lose my house. Oh God, praise the Lord. I hope everybody is still here, amen. But I wanna share uh, with you all about the gift of giving. You know what, I get excited about giving, uh, Pastor Simpkins. I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just that way because I really stand on the word of the Lord, you know, given uh, those who have the gift uh, of, of giving, you know, are particularly willing and able to share, you know, what resources they have and they do it with pleasure. Y'all hear what I say? That, that's, that's somebody with the gift of giving and without the need to see a return. That's folks that have uh, the gift of giving. And after we finish this lesson, I want you to be able to know and check it off to see, do you have the gift of giving? We talked about the gift of prophecy and the gift of teaching and some other gift. We're going to be dealing with the uh, gift of evangelism next week. But tonight, I want to challenge you and I want to ask you uh, this question. What is the gift of giving? All right. What is the gift of giving and we know that paul he talked about over there in romans the uh 12th chapter and let me grab that real quick because i want to kind of just make it plain romans the 12th chapter and the sixth and the eighth verse and this in the nrsv it said we have gifts 
that different according to the grace given to us, prophecy in preparation to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, and we deal with this, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, and I want us to underline that right there, the leader in diligence, and the compassionate in cheerfulness. Now, my goal on tonight, amen, is to encourage uh, all believers. I want to encourage you to be givers because all believers are encouraged to give. I just want to share that right now. All believers are encouraged to give. I'm going to say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. All believers are encouraged to give. And the Bible talks about over there in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Y'all need to write these scriptures down if you can in this Bible study. And I'm going to challenge you and I want you to please uh, participate. Ninth chapter, the sixth verse, and I'm going to work my way down uh, to the eighth, seventh verse. It says, but this I say, he would sow it sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. He that which sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now, this is the key right here. Every man, according as he has purposed in his heart. All right. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. I don't know about you. God don't like no stingy giver. God don't like no penny pitching giver. God, he loves a cheerful giver. And as each of us must give, as we have made it up in our minds. And first of all, it's really got to be in our hearts on what we're going uh, to give. You know, a, I read a story of Pastor Simpkins, how a farmer, right? A farmer, when he plants uh, some seeds, all right? And if he just plant uh, one seed, you, you know what he's going to get a, a harvest of? Just one plant. And if that uh, farmer uh, harvests, two seeds, he's going to get a harvest of two plants. But if he harvests a whole bunch of seeds, he's going to get a plenteous full harvest. And that's what God is telling us on tonight over here in uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. It's really talking about giving generously, you know, giving not of compulsion, you know, not somebody making you give, but I don't know about you. When it's come time to give, I have a heart to give. Amen. And that's the Bible. All right. And another way we are to give, and I want y'all to uh, uh, write this down and put it in your notes, because I know you're taking notes now. It's Bible study, and I don't want to start preaching. I kind of want to take my time. But we are to freely give. All right. We are to freely give. And the Bible talks about that. And y'all hear me talking about it on Sunday mornings. When I get a chance to do the offering, I'll be standing up there and I'll be nervous. Amen. But I get my favorite scripture and it's found over there in Luke 6 and 38. Then the Holy Ghost rises up in me and I get a little power in my left foot. And then I get a little power in my right foot, Pastor Simpkins. And the only lets me know is said, give. All right. And you will receive. All right. A large quantity. This is a different version. Press down. It talks about shaking together. All right. And running over. All right. It will be put into your pocket. But the whole key to that, it says that God will give back to you. Amen. Over there. That's found over there in Luke. And let me go there. I want to get in the King. James Version. Can somebody get that in the King James Version? This is Bible study. Somebody get Luke 6 and 38 for me. Um, in the King James Version and read it. Go ahead, missionary. St. Luke 6 and 38. 
Pastor, did you have your hand up before that scripture read? I had raised my hand, but it's really related to uh, before he left that particular scripture in, in Second Corinthians, there was something powerful right behind verse number seven, and that's verse number eight. Um, and it was greater than just getting back, glory to God, money or, or that kind of a thing, because he says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things. So God will meet all of your needs. He'll have, yes. he'll have all sufficiency and all things may have an abundance for every good work. So that it's just all encompassing. Uh, as you talked about, it's all encompassing. He'll, you'll have, God will make all his grace apply to you. So you'll have all sufficiency in whatever you endeavor to do. That, that's all I was going to. Thank you, Pastor Simpkins. Can Mr. someone get to Beverly? Okay. Um, I just wanted to just add that I just felt it on my heart. And it's not always about money. And I think that that's what came to me. It's not always money. Give, if you may not have a penny in your pocket, give your time. You know, Pastor says that there's a blessing in just your presence. You know, support providing moral support. You know, it's not, you know, when people are asked, if you don't have it to give, then that's not, but give what you have. And that's come in, that too should be given from your heart and freely. So that was something that like, sometimes when I hear this and I, I just remember hearing comments that other people make, they are always asking for money. No, they're not always asking for money. They're asking for what, you know, your gifts that you have, that you in other areas that you do what you can do. You know, so uh, anyway, that was heavy. Thank you so much for letting me share that, I, you know, because I think that pe somebody needed to hear. Besides me, I need to hear it too. Amen. And you absolutely right. And we're going to, we getting there. Amen. Because it's more than about giving money. Amen. We, we, we giving our time and I was going to get there. We giving our service. Amen. And that's giving back you know, giving to the community and solid rock, we do that, okay? We do that. And I'm just encouraging, I know we all know these scriptures and I know we all know all about this, but it's good to be encouraged, amen. For now, like Bishop said, let's do it, not back then, but now, all right? Give in our time, all right? When the mission is uh, having uh, a giveaway, help out, with the mission, when the brethren on Saturdays is having a giveaway, oh, we need your time. That's all a part of giving. And that's the gift of giving. Amen. When everybody, and I told you at the end of this uh, uh, lesson, I want to see if you will be able to check that off. Is that is that one of the gifts that you have? But I still kind of want to go uh, back over here to this scripture over in Luke 6 and 38. We still talking about the uh, uh, gift of giving. And if somebody Elder, has why that, you there? Elder, why are you there? Missionary Smith held up her hand. Okay, come on, Missionary Smith. I can't see nobody hand, so y'all help me out because I get excited. <laughs> come on, Missionary Smith. Yes, you sir. Had, you had asked for someone to read, so I had my hand up to read your scripture for you. That's what that's all. Read on. Okay, <laughs> Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, reading that. And, and that's just simply saying you can't be God's given uh, no matter how hard uh, you try. The more you give, the more God will give back to you. And I took a, a few notes. You know, it's not about uh, how you sow. All right. But where you sow. 
okay? You're right. And this really comes really from the heart. And once I began to sow, God would cause it to grow. And that's the kind of faith that we got to uh, have and believe uh, with God. And when you do your best, God will do the rest. Amen. You know, and that's uh, the kind of God uh, that we serve. But but what does God say about uh, the gift of giving and how does giving help support the church? Amen. And I want you to go over to uh, uh, Proverbs and somebody get this for me, please. Proverbs, the third chapter, the eighth and the ninth verse. Proverbs 3, 9. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Somebody get that and will you please uh, read it? Hey Amen. I can read it for you. Um, Come on. That's Come Proverbs on. 3, verses 9 and 10. Yes, yes. Okay, Proverbs 3, uh, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Uh -huh. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That's the key. Honor the Lord with thy substance, all right? And with the first fruit of all thine increase, all right? So why? Read that. Why? It's, it's the why behind it. Read why, the tip verse. Uh, verse 10 says, so, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, uh -huh. and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. It is a blessing to give, uh, y'all. It is a blessing to give of your time, and I'm going to say of your finances, to the work and to the ministry of God. And the Bible uh, gives us th this intelligence on how to give and why should we give, and we should freely give, we should sacrificially give, amen. Because the Bible says over there in uh, Malachi, y'all know this is one of my other of favorite scriptures, and I'm going to slow down because I'm going to ask everybody if you got a Bible uh, to go there with me to Malachi, all right? That's right behind Matthew, I believe. Malachi 3, 8 through 10, all right? We're talking about what does God say about the gift of giving? Who has Malachi? Malachi 3, 8 through 10. Come on, Bible students. Now, I could preach and go on, but I want to get some participation. Malachi 3, 8 through 10. I can read if you... Brother, oh. Go ahead. Uh, we have... Um, go ahead, Missionary Smith. Oh, okay. Malachi 3, 8 through 10. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye have cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in thine house, and prove me now wherewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you, Open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Will, will a man rob God? All right. Yet ye have robbed me. That's this is just this is just what the, the Bible is saying. Yet ye have uh, robbed me. You say, where, where have we robbed you? with your tithes and offering, all right? Uh, what is tithing, all right? And I know we all uh, probably know, and if we, if we don't know, uh, I'm going to remind you. And if we do know, I'm just going to encourage you. A tithe is a tenth of your income, all right? Given as an offering 
to your local church, all right? If you make $100, all right, 10% of that, which is $10, uh, goes right back, uh, or should go right back uh, to uh, the Lord. Tie. That's, I mean, when I first got saved, uh, they, they encouraged me, you know, pay your tithes, all right? Pay your tithes, all right? And when you pay your tithes, all right, you're going to be blessed. God tells you that he will open up the windows of heaven. Uh, man didn't say it, but God said it. And then he gave us a little, 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 little test. He said, prove me, try me, and see when I open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. So God is, is encouraging us, all right, on, on, on what uh, he says about the gift of giving, all right? Number one, he talks about giving uh, uh, freely, and then he talked about being a generous giver, and now he talked about tithing, all right? Tithing is a tenth of your earning. I heard somebody said uh, about them being addicted, uh, Pastor Simpkins and First Lady Simpkins, and I'm I, I'm going to get on that. I'm I'm going to get addicted to giving. Amen. I want to get addicted to giving, giving to the house of the Lord to help support the body of Christ. And I, I want to say this as just a little sidebar, and then we'll get back into it. But I don't know if anyone or how many watched the national uh, com com convocation, and I know some of you all was there, but I want to let you throw know through my TV, it felt as though like I was right there. And I felt the, the spirit, the energy, the power of God. And I saw how they was giving. And then I saw the look on our leader's face. Uh, even at the end on Sunday night, they were so pleased. And they talked about how this uh, uh, convocation they weren't leaving in the red, but they was already uh, uh, rejoicing because the saints was giving out of their heart. And uh, uh, I want to say this, uh, uh, evangelist uh, Renee Winston uh, talked about how she was, how she gave and she had gave and I don't know if everybody heard this, but she gave her last. Uh, she had a, uh, gave her one of her daughters her uh pay uh gave away her in, uh tuition amen and it was a lot of money and god turned right back around and i know she's telling the truth i know because she saved because the bible tells us right here he said i will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it she said she gave a hundred and fifty thousand and God gave her back 153,000. And that's, that's nothing but the power of God. And this is what God says about giving. Amen. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down, shake it together. I don't know if we have any hands. Anybody want to say anything? Amen. I know this is not a hot topic, but after tonight, I, I know that you're going to be inspired to give more. And if you don't, Shame on you. Come on, missionary hunter. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. You did pass by something. And I was thinking of a pastor typed it, tithes as a tenth of your increase. And so I just wanted to add this um, scripture from Deuteronomy 14, um, starting at verse 22. And I remember we had a um, session years ago where we brought in um, a guest speaker that taught us principles of tithing. Um, and I just found that binder pastor um, when I was cleaning out the other office. Deuteronomy 14 and 22 says, you shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year. Understanding what time they were in, that's how that was their income what they grew, they bartered it, they grew things, they sold them. That's how that was their earning. That's how they paid for their living. But it says all the increase. So everything I get, 
right? So when I get my taxes back, amen, saints, when I get my taxes back, I, it's an increase. I need to tithe it. Um, and I always think, you know, everything I get, I know I see a question there and I'll let pastor answer that question, whether you tithe on your gross or um, your net. And I tithe on everything that God gives me. I look at my gross and my husband's gross and I tithe on that. And if that isn't the correct principle, I tithe on what God gives me and my faith, right? And what I believe, I add faith to it. So if I wanna tithe on my gross, that's what I'm doing. Why well, look at my gross before all the taxes and all that come out? my husband's and I put that together and monthly, that's what we tithe. And God has blessed me tremendously. I mean, he has blessed me beyond measure. Even though my health is acting all funky now, I'm still alive. And when you look at that cardiac MRI, I should not be. I mean, I didn't have open heart surgery and got a defibrillator in my chest all in a six year period. God is still blessing me because I am a tither. I tithe. I am a giver. I give. And you'll never hear about it. Amen. You'll never hear about it because it's, it's just what God does for me that I give, but I give with expectation, expectation that those refunds are coming. They're sending deposits from the state of California and by everything that's written says I don't qualify, but I got one. And I'm grateful to God for that. So I am just, I, I just wanted to make sure that we put out there um, those tithing principles. It's of all of your increase. You find $10 on the ground, guess what? It's an increase. Whatever that increase is, God increasing me in health, of course, I'm gonna lay hands and pray that those around me recover because God gave me that. And that was an increase for me. So I, this, topic i just absolutely love giving amen pastor's hand is up as well yeah i was uh i think it interesting thank you so much uh missionary and thank you elder so much for this lesson one of the things we often hear is people say tithing is an old testament principle uh you don't see tithing in the new testament um and i just say that's because you heard me say this before that's because you haven't read the word because if you turn in your bibles to Matthew 23, 23. It's an easy one to remember. Matthew 23, 23. It's also in Corinthians. But I just want to want to hit this because this is actually, if you have a red letter Bible, this, this is in red letters. Glory to God. So this is Jesus speaking. And he says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So Jesus said, yes, you should have continued to tithe your whatever you're tithing. You should still tithe and still not neglect to do good, not neglect what God requires, not neglect. So don't think that your tithing is going to substitute for sanctification. It's not going to substitute for salvation. Am I making any sense? So, I, and I want to make sure that people understand that Jesus said you ought to have done that. You ought to have given your tithe, but you also ought to live holy. Obey God's word. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Simpkins. And, 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 and tithing is very important. Because the Bible tells us that tithing is a way to show that we trust God, number one, with our lives and our finances. Amen. We that that that's you know uh, one writer uh, 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 says this, and this is a like a truth bomb. Tithing isn't for God's benefit. He doesn't need our money. Instead, tithing is meant for our benefit because it shows that we trust God. Amen. That's that's the key right there. I could take my little 10% and go and blow it, but I'd rather give it to God and watch it grow, amen, and watch it come back. And like you said, uh, Sister Lisa Beverly, it could be in my health, 
Amen. God could bless me in my health for giving in my tithes. Amen. God can bless me, and he has blessed me uh, for, for, for being a, a giver. I'm not only a tithe pair, but I'm a giver. Amen. And that's what the Bible talks about. You know, it's all about paying your tithes and giving it free offering. But I don't want to uh, 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 make nobody mad on tonight, but I ain't scared of none of y'all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I'll tell you, God has, has been too good to me. Amen. And I'm going to, uh, Pastor Cynthia, if it's any uh, gift that, that uh, out of all them gifts, I could check this one off. I'm a giver. And I thank God for you, Pastor Cynthia. We're not flattered in you, but but I like your generosity. You're a generous man. Amen. And I thank God for that. And it's the spirit of giving that's down on the inside. My wife is a giver, y'all. And she pays the bills. You know, I make the money. You know, I, I you know, I let her handle the money. You know, <laughs> she pays the bills. Amen. But she makes sure we pay our tithes. Amen. And sometimes I go to that mailbox, Pastor Simpkins, and unexpected things be happening. Y'all might think I'm crazy, but it's true all by itself, Brother Clinsdale. Unexpected checks be coming. And now with this technology system, -wee, you could take a look in your bank account and say, oh, no, they done made a mistake and call the bank. And the bank ain't made no mistake. It's God done pushed the button and done added to your faith, amen, to your uh, bank account because of your faith and your trust and you putting your confidence in God. Amen. Let me finish here. I got to close. I've got a couple of more scriptures and then I'm going to close. Uh, over there in Proverbs 11 and 24. Proverbs 11 and 24. And listen to this. You know, because, you know, I don't, Pastor Simpkins, stingy people makes me itch. <laughs> you know, they make me itch. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, I just don't, you know, I, I, I learned, I'm, I'm learning, you know. But the, the Bible says, there is that that scattereth, all right, and yet increases. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat but it tended to poverty. Do y'all hear that? Let me read it in the NLT. I'm going to just make it plain. All right. It says, give freely. Uh, they give freely and become more wealthy. You remember I said give and it shall be given unto you. And some people give away money. You think, well, they ain't going to have no money. But the Bible says, they, they that, that scatter it yet increases. Amen. God like loves generosity, give freely and become more wealthy, be stingy and lose everything. Oh my God, hallelujah. Y'all better loose, amen. Tell the devil to loose, amen. Loose here and let it go, amen. Generosity is all about a spiritual and an emotional mindset. It requires us to live in faith and a release instead of fear and withholding. Some people are scared to give. Amen. You know, they're scared to give. And God don't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I like that saying, uh, when they say to give and plant your seed and watch it what? Not go, but watch it grow. Amen. God, I'm telling you, God has blessed, has been blessing us. You know, God is in the blessing business. It's one more scripture uh, I had, and it's over there in Mark, uh, the 12th chapter, Mark 12. Mark, this is Bible Bible study. I'm trying to take my time, y'all. I don't really want to bore you, but I want to help, you know, because, I mean, these scriptures, I was reading them, Pastor Simpkins, and I was getting blessed. I said, oh, my God, this is powerful. Amen. And I've been saying, uh, going on 30 years of Clinsdale, but there's something about the word of God. It just gets better and better. Amen. You get more uh, nuggets. And over there in 12 uh, and 41, you remember the widow's might? Amen. It's, it, you know, uh, uh, Sister Be Lisa Beverly, it's not my how much you give, you know, but y'all know the story about the, the widow's might? Can I just read a little bit of it and then I'm close? 
It says, and Jesus set over against the treasury. Y'all hear that? Jesus was there. And Jesus was looking too, y'all. Amen. And I'm quite sure if he was looking while he was here on earth, he's looking right now. Amen. And beheld how people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cashed in much. Praise the Lord. They had a whole lot of money and they probably gave $100. Amen. But they had a whole lot of money and only gave 100 But listen to this. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which make a farthing. That was nothing but a penny. And he called unto his disciples. He said, let me show y'all something. And said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you that this poor widow had cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her which did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And what I'm trying to say is God knows our heart. Amen. And God knows what we can give and what we cannot give. Amen. And we don't put no pressure on nobody to give more than they can give. Amen. But I want to let you know and challenge you. Give. Amen. Give what God has given unto you. If it's your time, if it's your money, if you able to teach, amen, teach, amen, if you able to clean up the church, clean up the church, amen, if you able to go pick up somebody, that's giving in your time, that is really the gift of giving, y'all, amen, and God honors the gift of giving. I'm closing, Pastor Simpkins, uh, uh, that's really um, all that I really uh, have to say, I took a whole bunch of notes. Amen. But I want to let you know I am fired up about our 25th uh, year anniversary now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. After I did this lesson, I don't. I do. It, it triggered me. Amen. I'm putting 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 my money in the in the account, y'all. I I am, and I'm not boasting about that. And and I know we we supposed to give in secret, but sometimes it's good to challenge and encourage folks to give. Amen. Sometimes y'all see us up there talking about how much we're giving. And the reason why we do that is to try to encourage some more folks to give. We ain't trying to show off because we can take that money and go buy a suit or something. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But it's good for us to encourage, right? One can chase a thousand of First Lady Simpkin. Two can chase 10,000. Amen. Can you imagine and when Pastor Simpkins told us we're going to have a mortgage burning service? Now, let me be honest with y'all. I'm closing. I've never been in one. And my brother Glenn has. And he held the can. And where they was burning the mortgage. Now I'm able to be in a church that wants to have a, a, a mortgage burning service. You think I ain't going to jump on board? Hey, man, you think I ain't going to help? Praise the Lord. I'm going to do all in my power because God has showed me that I got the gift of giving. I'm going to get mine, y'all. Amen. With the help of the Lord, uh, Elder Larry Moe, if I got to borrow some from you, I'll take it. Praise the Lord. But I got to give to this 25th year anniversary. And I thought I'd just say that in my closing. Amen. Hey, praise the Lord. We're going to do it. How many know we're going to do it? Come on. Type in the chat. Do it. Say, we're going to do it. Hey, man, we're going to do it. Praise the Lord. I don't know where it came from, but God sent it down. Burn the mortgage. We're going to do it. Amen. So I thank God for this lesson, Pastor Simpkins. I thank God for my gift, uh, Elder uh, Brother Glenn Ivory. Amen. Your brother, God gave it to me, you know, because I used to didn't want to give. But God showed me how to give. He told me to give a tenth. Amen. He told me to be generous. He told me if I hold on to my little money, I might lose it. But if I give it away, I'll get more. And praise the Lord. So I'm learning how to use the gift of giving. Now, let me ask the question. And type it in the chat. How many just believe? And if you got the gift of giving, just put in there, I got the gift of giving. Amen. It's into your hands, uh, Pastor Simpkins. God bless you all.
excuse me, I need, I was writing down, I have the gift to give it. I was writing it down, we're going to be obedient. And, 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 and I am too. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. God, we magnify you. We thank you for this setting on tonight. Now, God, I ask that you continue to provide for your people. God, you are a great provider. God, you told us to cast all our cares upon you. God, you have made ways out of no way. Some of our backs have been up against the wall. And God, you have opened up doors, God. God, as we thank you for, we thank you for supplying all our needs. God, we're coming up on the Thanksgiving uh, season and we're thankful, God. We're thankful for the little bitty thing, the food that's on our tables, God. God, we just thank you for our health and our strength. God, we just thank you for being our God. And God, we ask that you continue to bless us as we go forth and headed to the new year, God. Bless us and strengthen us. Keep us in good health in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Thank you so much. Uh, I was just thinking, Elder, the Lord had, uh, as you, this was kind of going on, and I knew we were going to talk about the Lord dropped in my spirit, especially as Sister Lisa talked about the fact that it's not always money. Uh, we give of our time, our talent, and our treasure. Our time, our talent, and our treasure. Amen. Uh, and so we give it. Then I was looking at John chapter six. You all might go there, if you will. John chapter six. Uh, and the Lord brought this to me and I said, God, I, I see this. I see this. Glory to God. John chapter six. Uh, now, this is after he said, the Passover had gone out into the wilderness and he said uh, to a desert place. And he said in verse number five. Uh, then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, two denarii, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for all of these, Lord. It's too little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, verse number eight, said to him, there is a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, make them sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples two fish, five loaves, two small fish, and he just distributed them to 12 disciples. And they stood, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as they, as they wanted, as much as they wanted. Y'all see that? As much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, now gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered up the fragments, gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Glory to God. God, the Lord Jesus, glory to God. When the boy, he took the boy, two, five, loaves, uh, five loaves and two fish, glory to God. And he got 12 baskets to go home with. Glory to God. The Lord is so good. Isn't, he, isn't the Lord good? Glory to God. When you give to the Lord, you can't lose. Blessing God's blessing God. And I just wanted to, to emphasize that point that yes, we give time and our talent and our treasure. We give all of ourselves to the Lord. And he returns, as we read earlier, all sufficiency in the scripture that Elder. Uh, Ivory was talking about all sufficiency. He, he makes everything in our lives work out for us. Glory to God, because we have been faithful and obedient. Giving is about faith, trust, and obedience. That's what giving is really about, faith, trust, and obedience. Amen? Glory to God, faith, trust, and obedience. And some folk, glory to God, they got salvation up to their giving. Glory to God. But when they get to the giving, uh, they break start working. Glory to God. They start pumping their brakes. I had a friend some years ago. 
uh, she said, I can't get no tithes. I make too much money. That's a lot of money to give the church. <laughs> she told me. I said, I, listen, glory to God. God is able. Glory to She's a friend of mine. So I told her, God is able to put a stopper on everything you got. <laughs> He's able to put a stopper on it. Glory to God. He'll cause, he'll, he'll cause that drain to open up. Glory to God. It'd be like you got holes in your pocket. Glory to God. So you got to scatter, as Elder uh, Ivory talked about today. Scatter your talents. Scatter your gifts. Don't withhold your abilities. Amen. Don't withhold your presence. Don't withhold your time. Give, glory to God, to the to the ministry, to what God is requiring to bless people. They're talking about this coming Saturday, they're going to be out um, feeding the community again, glory to God, and uh, evangelizing, going to the community and evangelizing, glory to God. And uh, Jesus told them to go in all world, all over the world and preach the gospel, glory to God. And that's what we're required to do, each one of us. So I'm just challenging each of us, glory to God to, uh, amen, join them this coming Saturday, amen, glory to God, well, I can't do a lot of walking, well, come down there, support them, and pray as they go, is that all right, is, is, is bracketing out your time, amen, to give to the Lord, now, we don't meet very much in church, in fact, it's hard to get some folks to come back to church, amen, somebody was saying yesterday, uh, or uh, Sunday at church, glory to God, one of the preachers was talking, he said, isn't it interesting that when we first went out on this pandemic thing, people were saying, glory to God, how can I stay in the house all the time? I don't know what I'm going to do stay in the house. Glory to God, how in the world can I make that happen? And now, glory to God, we got to folks say, I can't leave the house. Glory to God. I can't get out of here and go down and be a part. But you can. You can. Glory to God. You not only can, but you should. Amen. You should come to the house of the Lord. You should share your presence with the people of God. There is no dynamic that takes place in your home, glory to God, like it does in the household of faith. When the saints come together and they begin to clap their hands and sing their songs and play the tambourine, glory to God. And it's, just, and it's an extra benefit when we got some drums, glory to God, and, and a keyboard player. But even if we don't, amen, we sang glory to God to the glory and the honor of the Lord. Uh, and we minister and encourage one another. And so let me just challenge each one of us in our giving. Give of yourself, glory to God. Give of yourself. Share you with the body of Christ, glory to God. You are indeed a gift from God. You're a gift from God. Your presence is important to the edifying of the body of Christ. Can I talk to somebody? Somebody ought to wave your hand if you know I'm telling the truth. Glory to God. I just want to, I just want to see if there's anybody who agrees with me. Glory to God. Your presence, glory to God. You don't know how much, how important you are to the body of Christ. Sometimes folks don't say much, so they sit on, uh, on the chair and they don't do a whole lot. They're not involved. But just the fact that you are there is inspirational. Just the fact that you're there. In fact, it's empowering. Glory to God. And so I want to encourage each of you. And when you give of your time, when you give of your talent, glory to God, when you give of your treasure, Understand that God's going to, amen, make all grace abound to you and you'll have all sufficiency in all things. I didn't make that up. I just read that. God's going to make all grace abound to you. How many know we need some grace? Years ago, they used to sing a song. All I want is a little more grace. Glory to God. Y'all, Some of y'all have been around for a while. Y'all know that song. Glory to God. Uh, and so I want, I need the grace of God. He said he's going to make all grace abound to you and you'll have all sufficiency. You'll have everything you need in every aspect of your life when you are faithful. Glory to God, when you're faithful. Amen. Glory to God. I wish I had five or six people just put up some hands and some hearts. Let's give God a praise. Thank you, Elder. Amen. For the Bible study. Glory to God. Come on, put some hands up and some hearts, y'all. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Come on, do that. I'm going to put up a heart here. Glory to God. I wish I knew how to put up two or three. I would put up some hands and some hearts together. So I'm just going to have to go one at a time. I'll feel like putting up fire too. Amen. Fire too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Are, are there any comments or questions? Anybody would like to say anything? Glory to God as we move towards a close for Bible study. Yes. Uh, Brother Glenn Ivory. Yeah, I give honor to teacher, God. Teacher, I, I give honor to you too. Uh, 
uh, Pastor Simpkins and uh, bless you, First Lady Simpkins. God bless you over there. Give honor to you as well and to all my brothers and sisters that's on this call. Uh, Elder Ivory, we enjoyed you. Uh, and I'll make it personal. I enjoyed you. Amen. Thank God for you allowing the Lord to use you to encourage the body of Christ and all of us. God uses us all in different ways to cause his ministry to move forward. And when you're sharing the word of God and encouraging people to do what's going to be in their best interest, that helps the body of Christ to move forward. And when we give, it's in our best interest because God allows us. He, as a uh, pastor shared that scripture, how he asked about the little boy's lunch and the scripture let us know. I love the scripture. It just gives you the inside scoop on thing. He said he already knew what the situation was. He already knew what he was going to do, but he asked anyway. And that's applicable to us. He already know what the situation is, and he asks us to give anyway. And he wants to see what we're going to do. And we don't want to miss our moment. I taught this, this, this pastor the scripture one time, and I taught from the subject matter. You don't want to miss your moment. Amen. What if the little boy would have held back his lunch and say, no, I taught it from the standpoint of youth perspective. The little boy gave his lunch away. He didn't want to miss his moment. Amen. We don't want to miss our moment. God gives us an opportunity. Let us seize the moment. And I know if you look in this lesson that the pastor just said, those scriptures, such a natural response, they saw the limitations. How this is not going to be enough food. Where is it coming from? How are we going to do this? Jesus gave the spiritual response to the limitations. And let's be honest, saints, everyone on this call, unless you just flooded with money, most of us, oftentimes, sometimes, we're challenged with looking at the circumstances in the situation. I got this bill to pay. I got this bill. I got this. How, how am I going to be able to do this? But Jesus knew what he was going to do all along. And so let's do our best, and he will do the rest. Amen. Our best is to commit ourselves to, Lord, you have put these resources in my hands. I'm going to release them because they don't belong to me anyway. They belong to you. And God has a way of doing things. It's just amazing. It's amazing. And we thank God. Elder, thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing those scriptures. Amen. My brother told me he has a gift of giving. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. And thank God for each of us that's on this call. These calls have been a blessing. Amen. Thank God for our brother over here. What is it, Brother Clink Scales? Did that pronounce that right? Amen. Who led us in our men's cave last night. That was my first time on men's cases. I've been part of Solid Rock, and the brothers had a good time. Sisters, watch out. The brother's on the move. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ivory. I'm going to hear from Sister Nisha Gardner and then that other Larry Moore. Good evening, everyone. I first want to get her to God and to the pastor and the first lady and everyone in their respective places. I just wanted to say... I enjoyed my dad on tonight. It was a, a, a it was an amazing message tonight. I love to, you know, hear him and my mom go forth. I don't get to hear it often because I don't go to church with them. But when I'm invited to attend to something that they are going forward, I just enjoy it and I, you know, can piggyback on my uncle glenn and you know god wants us to be a cheerful giver and i was just thinking that you know times that it you you think about oh i have this to pay i have this to pay and oh i got this to do and i won't have enough for this but god wants you to step out on faith he wants you to bless him so he can bless you and i have been seeing that and sometimes i struggle with like god well if i do this well when am I gonna get something in return and I have to realize that my mom and my dad they tell me it may not come when I want it to come but God is always on time and it's not that he's just gonna always bless you with monetary it can be blessing you with anything I have been praying God I need to get a job closer to home and so I can be you know out of that traffic and I just have been faithful with my tithing faithful faithfully paying my tithes and I'm like well when is it gonna happen and I would pray my mom would tell me it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and it happened and I just say that to say that I'm gonna keep on 
given my tithe so God can continue to bless me and my family, even if it's not monetary, but if he just blessed my family just to be closer with him, I'll be thankful for that. If he blessed my husband to get saved, I'm going to be thankful for that. I'm praying for it. I am putting that in the atmosphere right now that God is going to bring him closer to the Lord like he was before. And I'm just asking that God continue to bring me and my children closer to the Lord. Again, I enjoyed this message on tonight. I've enjoyed these last couple of weeks that I've been on. I have enjoyed everyone. Um, but tonight was different hearing it from my dad. I really enjoyed it. And thank you all for this time. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. My God. Certainly, we want to give honor to God. They got me on mute. Oh, no, I'm off on mute. Thank you. Give honor to God. Amen. Good to see you, Pastor. First Lady, so good to have y'all back. I mean, it's just a joy just to see y'all. You know, maybe next year I'll go down there with y'all. Praise the Lord of God. Say the same. And I want to say, Elder Ivy, I got here late. But man, you was hammering it out, Doc. You were doing your thing for God. I appreciate you, my brother. You make a lot of sense. Even the scriptures that Pastor was talking about, he said, man, you know, it's even funny, man. Folk that ain't even saved time. <laughs> they got some folk that ain't even saved time. In other words, they say the heathens is time. And man, the heathens that do something as well. Hello, somebody. But you know, we have to be like, God gonna do it whether or not we do what we're supposed to do. You do as unto the Lord. If we learn the reciprocity, mm, mm, mm. I reminded myself when I got ready to want to live a, a, a regular life like everybody else, because I used to be homeless, you know. And when I was homeless, man, I was still doing the will of the Lord. And I was telling God what I needed. And when I told the Lord what I needed, because I've already put my timber earlier, Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Put my timber up earlier, God opened the door for me. And I live in that manner, man. You have to learn how to sense to me. Sometimes you may not have nothing. Or what you have, you just give up that. And them old folks, they used to, you have peas and I got I got peaches and they bring the peaches and, the, and, and you know what I'm saying? And we share them with the church. But nowadays folks just wanna give what they wanna give because of their situation in life. And sometimes it's just hard for people. But I, I, I tell you, I tell you, when the Lord tell me to give, I'm gonna give it. And that's how it works. And I'm just so grateful to be here. I got in a little late, but I'm just glad to come in now. Thank God for the word of God and, and the people of God so much for this opportunity and time. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Glory to God. Well, I want to thank God for everybody that joined in tonight. Thank you for everybody that read a scripture. Amen. And clapped your hands and put something in the chat box that glory to God put up one of them emojis, hearts or hands or something. Glory to God, because all of that encourages, amen, our uh, ministry to go forward. Thank you. Uh, Elder Ivory, what a tremendous job. Thank you once again, amen, for sharing with us um, in a place where we can understand and receive it and join in with it, Lord God. And indeed, it challenged some. It challenged, but that's important. Uh, I think I was sharing not long ago about the fact that uh, if you're in church and if you're in the, under the teaching or the preaching and it never touches you, you never feel, glory to God, at all convicted any kind of way, then that's because your conscience is seared. Glory to God. You need to ask God to give you a, a heart of flesh. Amen. Because none of us are perfected yet. Amen. And there are areas we need to grow in, each one of us. Glory to God. And so this is this is a powerful area as we deal with. And I really want to emphasize the fact that we're talking about the gifts. Glory to God. Everybody has been given a gift that they gift or gifts that they need to give back to the body of Christ that they need to sow in to the body of Christ, that they need to sow in to individuals who need to know about the body of Christ. Amen. Uh, the gift of evangelism, which we'll talk about next week, is to go out and be able to bring folks in. How do we carry it ourselves? How ought we to behave ourselves if we're going to deal with that? Well, you all come back next week. We're going to talk about that. I'm sure they will. Glory to God. I ask everybody, if you will, tonight, uh, to get your best seed together. Glory to God. Get a seed for the for the study. We'll see how that goes. Glory to God. How, how many people were impacted by this? 